When deciding how to proceed with your ceremony, the first thing you need to decide on is whether you choose to get married in a church or in a more symbolic civil ceremony. To answer some of our questions about civil ceremonies, we're here today with Jane Morgan. Hi Jane, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me here. I know you are a wealth of knowledge and I can't wait to pick your brain a little. <laughs> Go right ahead. So first, tell us a little bit about you and what it is you do as a marriage commissioner. Well, um, how I became a marriage commissioner was through my DJ business. I started over 30 years ago and uh, I developed a passion for weddings. Mm. And through my DJ business, I would supply music and microphones for ceremonies. and. One day, it dawned on me, I said, I can actually marry people as well. So I, I put together a package and it, it skyrocketed and my passion grew and this is what I do. I bring people together and make them happy. Wow, and I'm not surprised because it just suits you so perfectly. Oh, thank you. Um, Jane, when should a couple start contacting you and what exactly should they have in mind before they start speaking with yourself or another marriage commissioner? Well, uh, the first thing you have to do is set a date, of course, and along with the date, of course, is a venue. And what's popular now is to hold the ceremony and the reception in the same location. So contact your venue and just uh, make sure that they're available on your date and then uh, decide the size of your, your wedding, what, you, what you'd like to uh, incorporate there, and whether you want to have an intimate ceremony or something more uh, substantial. And then the next step should be to contact your officiant because your ceremony, of course, is the most important part of the day, so that your officiant should be one of the top five vendors for sure. Fantastic. So in order to make a wedding legal, of course, you've got to have a marriage license. How do our couples go about getting their marriage license and what exactly is the timeline associated with it? Well, uh, a marriage license is valid in Newfoundland and Labrador for 30 days. So any time within the 30 days before your wedding day, uh, you can apply for a marriage license. Uh, there's two ways to, to achieve one. Uh, one is through uh, a government office, Vital Statistics, a Division of Service NL. And you go to the government office and uh, you apply. And uh, another method is through a private marriage license issuer. Uh, oftentimes they operate from their home and stuff. So uh, if you look on the Service NL website, uh, there's a spot there uh, to look up marriage uh, license issuers. Yeah. So. Perfect. That must be really convenient though for those of us who work nine to five jobs. Yes. To be able to get their license in the evening too. Yes. And. Uh, I would recommend that the couple, both members of the couple, go uh, in person to apply for the license uh, because if you go alone, you have to have a sworn affidavit from your partner in order to get a marriage license in their name as well. So it's much more convenient if both people go. And will we get that on the same day or do we have to wait any, any period of time afterwards? No, uh, to my knowledge, uh, I know for sure that the government offices will issue them the same day. Uh, most uh, private marriage license issuers will, offer, will issue them the same day. I, I've never heard in my years of, of uh, commissioning of anybody having to wait okay. on the marriage license. Usually it's right away. That's great. Mm -hmm. And when should they bring that to you to make sure that all the paperwork is in, in place? Well, um, I recommend whether it's me or any other vendor, photographer, video person, decorator, uh, you shouldn't have any meetings the week of your wedding. Like mm -hmm. you, you should take that week to relax. Yep. And uh, so, you know, I'd like to meet with the couple about two weeks before the wedding day and they can bring their license to me. And uh, when they get their marriage license, they don't fill anything out. So when your marriage license issuer gives you your marriage license, you bring it to your officiant. You don't attempt to fill it out <laughs> yourself because uh, it's, it's quite lengthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's really popular now, Jane, for couples to ask someone in their family or possibly a friend to perform their ceremony for them. What really is the benefit of hiring someone like yourself, a professional marriage commissioner, over having a friend who's been granted a one-time marriage commissioner status? Well, it's a nice sentiment to have a friend or family member officiate, and I have heard wonderful stories of, you know, an aunt and uncle friend performing the ceremony and it went off without a hitch. Uh, pardon the pun. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, in my, through my experience, uh, you know, wedding, professional wedding officiants do a lot more than just perform the ceremony. I, in my case, I help with the processional to make sure the bridal party are lined up correctly. Um, I help the photographer in that I, I pose the couple 
uh, so they can get the best, the photographer can get the best shots. And just for peace of mind to know that the person conducting your ceremony has done this many times before and they know how to, you know, troubleshoot. Sometimes little things happen and, you know, a, a professional experienced uh, officiant will know how to uh, kind of iron out the wrinkles. Yeah. Now take us through the process, Jane, because I know from your ceremonies that everything is a little bit more personal with you, everything is a little more tailored to the couple. Can you take us through the process of planning a ceremony with a couple? Sure. Uh, initially when a couple books with me, uh, I give them what I call, is something I put <laughs> together, it's called a ceremony planning kit and it has a mountain of information about uh, you know the legal aspects of the ceremony uh, you know what's expected for them to recite at the ceremony it has some ideas about the wording of your vows uh, the exchange of rings uh, it has some information in there about uh, readings about love and marriage so basically i give them that kit from the beginning and then uh, i meet with them two or three times before their wedding day and uh, get their ideas to see what they would like to say to each other and so basically, no two ceremonies are the same, and that's what makes it so much fun. So they just come to me with their ideas, I give them some of my ideas, and we sit down, have a coffee, and come up with the perfect ceremony for them. Perfect. So do you encourage couples to write their own vows, or do you have some set examples that you like to work with? Oh yes, I give them a list of maybe eight or ten, uh, you know, suggested vows and sometimes they write their own vows with keywords that they've kind of found from my ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I say to them, say what you want. Uh, some couples say to me, you know, my vows are only two lines long. And somebody will say, well, my vows are a paragraph long. And I encourage them to say what you want to say. It doesn't matter the length. Uh, you know, you don't have to be a Harlequin romance writer. <laughs> uh, just say what's in your heart and sometimes you can say it in one sentence, sometimes you do need a paragraph. So um, some people are a little bit shy about talking in, in front of a crowd. So I just say to them, you know, if, if you're a little apprehensive about lengthy vows, then just say something traditional, uh, for better or for worse type thing. Perfect. Jane, I know a lot of couples ask me every single wedding season, is the rehearsal really important? What are your views on the rehearsal? Is it something that is necessary for the whole process? For the smaller uh, intimate ceremonies where there's only, uh, you know, the couple, their witnesses and myself and photographer, usually a video person, uh, I don't, uh, rehearsal is not necessary. Um, but for a larger wedding, especially if you have a large bridal party, especially with children. Mm -hmm. If you have children in the bridal party, it's imperative to have a rehearsal. Um, for peace of mind again, and also uh, to get the, the people involved familiar with the venue. I mean, you might go to your venue and be familiar with it and comfortable with it, but members of your bridal party and your family may not. So it's important for them to go and just get a feel for you know, what they're about to do. And also if they've never stood in a wedding, it's, it's nice, um, and I go to rehearsals, and oftentimes the couple will say to me afterwards, I feel so relieved, you know, I'm so glad that we did a rehearsal because now I, kn I know what to expect. It definitely helps get the jitters out, I find. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. And is there a fee involved for you to come and do the rehearsal, or is that built into your package? I do have packages where the f rehearsal is included, um, but then I, I do charge a fee um, you know, there is a specific fee for that simply because it takes an hour or more and it's on a different day. Mm -hmm. uh, usually the rehearsal is two days before the, the wedding day. So I, I do charge a fee because of the length of time. It's almost like doing the ceremony all over again. As a matter <laughs> of fact, it's even longer than the ceremony because sometimes we go through it two or three times. So yeah, there is a fee. Jane, in a traditional church ceremony, typically we do see the unity ceremony of the mothers or a family member lighting the candles mm -hmm. to bring a family together, or two families together. With a civil ceremony, like you perform, or a symbolic ceremony even, there's lots, lots more freedom. Mm -hmm. What are some of the options that people can go through for a unity ceremony? Well, uh, the most popular and the most traditional would have to be the unity candle ceremony. Uh, you use two tapered candles and a, a larger candle in the middle. Uh, usually it's a representative from both of the couple's families. They come forward and light the tapered candles. And then at the end of the ceremony, to s symbolize the union uh, of the couple, 
uh, we light the marriage candle. And again, that's, I remember doing it, you know, at weddings, you know, 25 years ago. So mm -hmm. that's most traditional. Um, there's a unity sand ceremony, which is quite nice. Um, again, you know, the couple can choose uh, their co favorite color of sand, and that it could just be both of them. But I've done up to 15 colors in the one vase wow. where they incorporate the family. Um, oftentimes they'll pour a white color sand in memory of, of loved ones who are no longer with us. There's so many ways to bring the unity sand ceremony into your ceremony, uh, ways to incorporate family and friends, and especially couples that have children. Uh, you know, you can have uh, the couple, uh, their kids can pick their favorite color sand, and it's a keepsake. You get to keep it after the ceremony, and it's so nice, you know, 20 years down the road to look at uh, your vase of sand and say, look, you know, this is the day we were married, and, and uh, the whole idea of the unity sand is that as the grains of sand unite, the family unites. So it's quite nice. And again, it's a keepsake you can have forever. And I've done sand ceremonies where we've done the miniature sand ceremonies for the kids. Oh. Yeah, so they have keepsake uh, of, of their parents' wedding day. Yeah, it's quite nice. They must be beautiful as well to display and, and keep it in is. your home. It is, and it's, and it's unique. So our ceremony is over. They, the couple has been legally married. They've had their honeymoon and their home now. If a bride or a groom wants to change or even hyphenate their name, What's the process there? Well, uh, one of the biggest misconceptions about this whole process is that uh, you're not actually changing your name when you become married. You're assuming your partner's name, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of people say, how do I change my name? Yes, you can change your name through a legal process, but again, that's exactly what it is, a legal process. Through marriage, you're assuming your partner's name. So it's simple. All you have to do is just present your marriage certificate uh, to the place where you want to change your name, for example, uh, MCP, social insurance, and things like that. Your marriage certificate allows you to assume your partner's name. So you can hyphenate, you can, you know, uh, assume his name or her name 100%. It, it, yeah, so there's no real legal process through that. You just do it at your individual, like Department of Motor Vehicles and things like that. So you mentioned the official marriage certificate. How do we go about obtaining that? Well, um, your officiant will give you a marriage certificate. Uh, this is a keepsake. It's not an official one because there's no number on it, there's no stamp on it. So, uh, but that's what you use to obtain your official marriage certificate. Uh, you have to go to where your marriage license was um, processed. So, like here in St. John's, for example, it would be Mount Pearl. In, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so if, if you obtained your, your marriage, your original marriage license, that's where you have to go to get your certificate. You have the absolute pleasure of being a part of the moment, the moment when the couple actually becomes married, actually becomes legally one couple. Do you have any moments that you'd like to share with us? Any memories of specific ceremonies that stand out? Oh, I could write a book. <laughs> um, I, I try to take something from every ceremony, whether it was, you know, the laughter of the children, uh, you know, uh, the grandparents were present. I, 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 I walk away from every ceremony overwhelmed and actually honored to, to be the one to, 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 that had just united them in marriage. Um, I have some funny stories. I have sentimental stories. Um, I remember out on the southern shore, I was marrying a couple and it was on uh, someone's land like the grandparents land and we were on the edge of a cliff and I am absolutely petrified of heights <laughs> and uh, I had to maintain my composure during the ceremony you know looking at the rocks and the ocean below me but now it was absolutely stunning but uh, you know I was a basket nurse I, I think I was more nervous than the couple actually <laughs> Yeah. But you made it through and that's what matters. <laughs> I made it through and you know, there's so many sentimental love stories. Uh, there's another one that stands out in my mind. Uh, the bride and groom had, had, grown, had grown up next to each other and they absolutely hated each other. You know, they were always fighting and arguing, you know, like youngsters do. And they went their separate ways and 40 years later, they reunited and they found each other on Facebook and they were both in the position to be married and uh, they, they fell in love you know, 40 years later. And um, what they used for their wedding invitation was the image from a valentine that he had given her when he was only 12 years old. 
Oh, and she kept it for special. 40 years. Yeah, she kept it for 40 years and that's what they use. And I mean, you know, things like that, is, it's just overwhelming. It really is. And, you know, to, to see, you know, the, the, the happiness in, in a couple's faces, you know, the day they're married and just being a part of that is, is so special. So Jane, how can our couples get in contact with you so that you can be a part of their big moment? Well, uh, it's a good old-fashioned telephone. Mm -hmm. uh, they can call me at 747-6758 uh, is my office number. Uh, my website, uh, if you want some more information there, is uh, www.janem.ca. Quite easy. And uh, Facebook. Look me up on Facebook. I'm there. and. Um, I think that's about it and you know call me anytime and even if you're just looking for some information if you need some advice give me a call wonderful thanks so much for being with us here today jane it was so much fun it was great to chat and learn so much about your job thank you